Slip, slide, slaggle. Don't miss the gaggle. That's good. Sleepover on Discovery Kit. Today on Mystery Hunters, we're going into some deep, <laughs> dark, and dank places to hunt for violent ghosts. I'm gonna do a night of hard time in Alcatraz. The island prison is the house of America's worst criminals, but now is only home to their ghosts. I believe this is one of the most haunted cells on the rock. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in here. Doubting Dave takes a group of unsuspecting students on a tour of an underground hospital passageway that's haunted. Or is it? One time somebody actually saw something in there. Oh my god. I, I saw like a, a little yeah. light. And I'm off to a cemetery in Scotland to hunt down a dangerous ghost who reportedly attacks all who enter his tomb. Why are you attacking people? I, I felt like something was on my neck. I, I just really just wanted to get out. Has this ever happened to you before? No. This is it's Mystery, Mystery Hunters. Hunters. Is Alcatraz haunted? by the violent, angry ghosts of its former prisoners. Hundreds of years ago, Americans built a fortress prison on the island of Alcatraz. They sent their worst criminals there, like Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. Alcatraz became famous as a prison from which there was no escape, and terrifying tales spread of what went on inside. One story describes a prisoner screaming that a demon with glowing eyes was in his cell. The next morning, he was found dead. Alcatraz, there it is. In a minute, I'll be inside. Welcome to Alcatraz. John Martini worked here as a park ranger. He knows a lot about the strange things that have gone on here. And there's some areas of the island where they're just sort of, you know, bad juju and... Bad juju? You'll see for yourself. Good luck. Gary, Saturday Night Sleepover will be back on Discovery. Get your freak on! It's time to log on and freak out! Go to discoverykids.com and get your freak on! Freaky fat, freaking good downloads, and if you find the freaky figure, you get a freaky treat! Freak Week on discoverykids.com. That is scary. Want to see something really scary? Dare to watch Scary Saturday Night Sleepover every Saturday night, only on Discovery Kids. Scary Saturday Night Sleepover is back on Discovery Kids. This cemetery might be home to the most terrifying ghost we've ever investigated. They've been giving tours of this Scottish cemetery for four years now and strange and creepy things have been happening to the tourists. What did people report? Uh, cuts and bruises on their bodies, people began to collapse, and it got worse and worse. For instance, one woman in the tomb last week said when she went in, all the fingers on one hand broke. All five fingers? Yep. The reports all take place in a tomb they call the Black Mausoleum. Raina Durham is just one of the hundreds of people who say they were attacked by the ghost. The first time I went on the tour, I came home to discover I had bruises about this big from here all the way down to my ankle. Wow. And you went back again? <laughs> yeah. So what happened the next time? I was actually knocked unconscious this time and was carried out by the tour guide. What do you think? you think it's possible that the tomb's haunted? I certainly think there could be something in there because you don't get knocked unconscious if there's nothing there. There's an angry ghost in here. I guess I'm about to meet him. Anybody in here? Are you angry? 
Why are you attacking people? Show yourself! It was pretty creepy in there, but nothing happened. But so many people have been attacked, like Karen Perrin. She says the ghost actually talked to her. All of a sudden, I started feeling quite sick. Then what happened? Well, I didn't think much of it until the next day when I woke up and I had scratches on my back. That's all I could think about was, like, the poltergeist got me and scratched my back. I went back about six months later, but then I got hit, and it's so hard to describe. A hit from, like, inside my head, like a slap sort of inside my head, just sort of went bang, and I heard this voice saying, get out. Sorry, I always get upset when I talk about this bit. It wasn't very pleasant. No. No. So I'm guessing you wouldn't take the tour again? Definitely not. Karen might not want to go back to the tomb, but I will. I'm going to take the tour tonight, and we'll see if the ghost attacks me. Different people react differently to scary things. Ah! For example, I get a delayed reaction to fear. But how... <laughs> but Hallett McMahon gets a much weirder reaction than that. Take a look on the Mystery Illustrator. Dear Doubting Dave, sometimes I go to old houses that people say are haunted. And I break out in a rash. My best friend James did some research, and he found out that other people have gotten rashes when they've been near ghosts, too. Ew. Can ghosts give people rashes? Well, Hallett, I have heard of people getting weird physical reactions when they've been to a place they think is supernatural. People who enter crop circles often report getting headaches and feeling nauseous and dizzy hours after leaving the area. And people have reported the same kind of symptoms after leaving places they believed to be haunted. Oh. The problem is, these are the very same symptoms people can get in any situation where they're stressed, whether they're standing in a house they think is haunted or sitting in a classroom about to take a test they didn't study for. When you're scared of something, your body can react in some pretty extreme ways, including headaches, nausea, dizziness, shaking, breathing problems, and even rashes. So, Hallett, I don't think a ghost caused your rash. I'm not even convinced you were near a ghost. Yeah. But either way, you'd need a lot more than a rash to prove it to me. <laughs> Remember the golden rule, Hallett. Things aren't always what they seem. Scary Saturday Night Sleepover will be back on Discovery Kids. Kids, it's really, really real! This Halloween. Get your freak on! It's time to log on and freak out! Go to discoverykids.com and get your freak on! Freaky facts, freaking good downloads, and if you find a freaky figure, you get a freaky treat! Freak Week on discoverykids.com. That is scary. Scary Saturday Night Sleepover is back on Discovery Kids. Is Alcatraz haunted by the violent ghosts of its former prisoners? Oh, hey Scott, you're here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm in the hospital. Okay, where's that? Take the northwest corner and go up the stairs. Northwest corner. Got it. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, Scott. Scott Young was on a specially arranged ghost tour here a year ago. He's pretty sure that he saw a ghost. I was walking through the corridor, and I basically saw a shadow right over there in that corner. And I got really freaked out. And it started to move into the next room, so I tried to follow it by going through the hallway. And it seemed to go into this area right here, and I wasn't allowed to go down there. Oh, were you scared? Oh, man, I got so spooked out from that. What do you think it was? I think it was a ghost. I got my special access card, so I'm going to go and try and find out. All right. Good luck, man. Thanks. Well, 
Well, it's definitely creepy being here at night, but no ghosts. Doesn't look like there's anything here right now. Scott isn't the only person to report ghost sightings in Alcatraz. I'm now in the dreaded D block, the place where they sent misbehaving prisoners. They called it the hole. This is cell D14. This is supposed to be where that prisoner screamed throughout the night that a demon with glowing eyes was in his cell. And in the morning, he was found dead. D14 isn't the only cell where strange things happen. Richard Sennett had a scary experience in D12. I was asked by a radio station to come out here and prove Alcatraz was haunted, and they had me locked into D12. I believe this is one of the most haunted cells on the rock. I was in this corner when they closed the door, and I felt like I wasn't alone. Did you feel like you were in danger? Yes, there was something in here, evil and terrible. I'm gonna see how long I can last in cell D12. This DV camera is gonna film me while I'm in the cell. If anything else that happens, I'm gonna capture on my own camera. It's specially equipped with infrared so I can see in the dark. If this cell is haunted by the ghost of a misbehaving prisoner, this is one freaky way to find out. If you want out, give me a call. All right. How long were people forced to stay in the hole? The longest was 19 days at a stretch. <sighs> Good luck. Thanks. Whatever is in there, it's still there. Is there anybody in here? We're heading for the Black Mausoleum. That's where the poltergeist always attacks people who are taking this tour. Let's see if any of us get attacked tonight. I'm just going to give a warning out here. The facts are there's been well over 400 documented attacks by this poltergeist, of which at least 140 people have been knocked unconscious during this tour. This is at your own risk. Here we go. I'm going in. If you suddenly go freezing all over your body at once, move away from where it is you're standing. If you don't move, it will knock you unconscious. It's called a cold spot. I'm telling you that because I've had to physically carry 45 unconscious people out of this tomb over the last four years. Is it here? Is the ghost among us right now? I thought we'd been very lucky. Watch your step on the way out. Oh, there you go. Did you feel anything? Oh, uh, my left arm went dead, oh. that's all. Your left arm? Yeah. What happened? It just went a bit dead, that's all. What do you mean dead? You know when you numb up, that's it all. just numbed up. Yeah. I don't feel anything so far, but remember, a lot of people say they get bruised and scratched after they leave the tomb when they get home. If there really is a ghost, I hope he doesn't come after me tonight. We're in some tunnels under a 100-year-old hospital. And we're going to use this creepy environment to find out just how strong the power of suggestion can be. We told 10 kids that they were going to be part of an experiment to see if we could meet the infamous ghost that inhabits this hospital wing. We uh, think there's a ghost at this hospital. It's a 100-year-old hospital. We told them that in the 1890s, this corridor was filled with mentally ill patients, including a dangerous madman named Edward Delacroix. We told them about the research laboratory where a nurse named Marla Johnson died in a fire. Because when it started, Edward Delacroix locked her in from the outside. And then we let their minds go to work because none of this really happened and no one has ever seen a ghost down here before until today. This is where they found Marla Johnson's body. It's actually a cold spot in the room. We don't know why it's colder. And uh, I wanted people to just go over and stand and just feel, oh yeah, it's there. There's no cold spot here. It's exactly the same temperature as the rest of the room. Yeah, it's definitely cold. A little bit colder? I just, I got like a chill on my back. Oh yeah, temperature changed, right? Probably right over here. That's exactly where they found her body. Okay, I want to show you something else. We have the key that uh, Delacroix used to lock Marla Johnson into the room. One weird thing can happen with the key. When you hold the key in your hand and you think of the name or think of Marla Johnson, it actually gets hot in your hand. This is an old trick phony psychics use. Your hand heats the key up, 
but you convince yourself it's the other way around. Yeah, it's getting really hot. It's not like hot enough to burn me, but yeah, it's hot. Now that everyone is totally freaked out, we decide to tell them the truth. I want to tell you why we were here. Marla Johnson doesn't exist, the nurse. We made up the story of Edward Delacroix. He doesn't exist either. We made those up, and I'll tell you why we made them up. Because we believe that in haunted houses, people convince themselves that they're haunted before they even walk in. It was so believing, the way you like told the story and the way you were like acting, how like like normal, but how freaky it was and how freaky we saw things. Our imagination kind of took us far. Do you think it's still possible that that part of the hospital is haunted? Definitely. How many do? Yes, it could be. Yeah. But one thing's for sure, when people are scared, they can convince themselves of anything. Mm. Scary Saturday Night Sleepover will be back on Discovery Kids. It's Halloween. Time to log on and freak out. Go to discoverykids.com and get your freak on. Freak Week on discoverykids.com. If you think Hawaii's all sunny skies and sparkling blue water, just wait till you see it in Durant style. There's rain, mud, and weeks of pooling competitions. Oh my gosh. Endurance Hawaii. It's no day at the beach. Endurance on the Discovery Kids channel on Saturday mornings on NBC. Scary Saturday Night Sleepover is back on Discovery Kids. I'm gonna see how long I can last in cell D12. Whatever is in there, it's still there. Good luck. Thanks. It's dark in here. It's cold. Can't imagine sitting in a cell like this for 19 days. For it to last 10 minutes. My fully charged battery just died. Then, when I pop in my backup battery, that dies too. Uh, I'm gonna have to take another camera. I guess I'm gonna have to switch. All right, well, that's really odd. I just <laughs> experienced two batteries dying. This is my third battery. Um, wow, that's kind of weird. Is there anybody in here? Trying to give me a sign not to be in here? I'm gonna try and last 10 minutes. There's the hole that they used to go to the bathroom. Like, whoa, my battery's about to die again. That's the third one we went through. I mean, it, it just said 48 minutes a few seconds ago. I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in here. I think something, something, someone doesn't want me in here. John, um, could you open the door for me, John? Uh, I want to get out. You're right there. Come on out. Well, what do you think? Well, it was definitely weird. Uh-huh. I mean, I went in there with a full battery and two different cameras, and I came out with one, three dead batteries. I mean, when I, I looked at it, and it said 48 minutes, a full battery, and then it died within a minute. Did you see anything? Did you feel anything? I didn't really see anything. I guess I felt scared after the cameras, like, all the batteries died, and then I was just left in the dark. Mm -hmm. Any ghostly apparitions? No, I, I, don't, I didn't feel any ghosts. I think I just felt scared because I was, like, in this dark room. But, how do you explain what other people have said they've seen? It's something called sensory deprivation. Without sound, without light, that's when things start to get really odd. And that's when your mind starts to play incredible tricks on you. Is there anybody in here? Maybe that's where some of the stories of ghosts and apparitions come from, too. There was something in here, evil and terrible. The mind is an extremely powerful muscle, and it will make up things, and in a void, It'll fill them sometimes with terrifying thoughts. Do you want to guess how long you were in there in total dark? Oh, um, seven minutes. It says you were only in there for four minutes and 42 seconds. Can you imagine what it would be like to be in there for up to 19 days? No way. I mean, me being in there for just a little while had me scared. 19 days? That just might turn me crazy, I mean. <laughs> you ready to go back in? No way. OK, <laughs> let's get, let's out, get out of here. <laughs> the mystery remains. Whether what haunts Alcatraz is psychological or supernatural, what I do know is that I'll be glad to sleep in my own bed tonight.
poltergeist sometimes attacks people later, after they get home, giving them bruises and scratches. Tomorrow I'll see if the poltergeist attacked me. Now it's time to see if anything has left its mark on me. Nothing on my arms. I'll have to go do a more thorough check. Nothing yet. No scratches. No bruises. I'm done. I didn't find anything. Come with me. Remember that girl from last night whose arm went numb in the tomb? She's here. Something happened. So what happened? Well, last night my arm went numb, and I thought that was just going to be it. But I woke up this morning, and I found something else. I found this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it looks like a handprint. It really does. I actually found scratch marks as well. Do you think it could have been the poltergeist? Yeah, I think it was, because they weren't there before, and there's nothing since then that could have caused them. You know, maybe these bruises aren't that hard to explain. You know, it was really dark in there, and we were so focused on looking and listening, maybe we bumped into things and didn't notice. All kinds of things can cause scratches and bruises. Jan said people collapse coming out of the tomb. I wonder if there's anything causing them to trip. This is totally uneven. There's rocks scattered all over the floor. People can easily trip on this stuff. We actually saw one guy trip as he walked out. Mike Driscoll investigates ghosts. Hey, Mike. He's been looking for proof that there really is a poltergeist here. There's definitely something going on in here. Whether it's paranormal or it's down to the power of suggestion, I don't really know. You mean because of build-up by the tour guides before people enter the tomb? Absolutely. I mean, before, before the tour comes in, they're being told all these ghastly stories outside. The facts are there's been well over 400 documented attacks by this poltergeist. Basically, they're having the, the wits scared out of them. Maybe so, but while I was in there talking to Mike, I suddenly felt really creepy. I don't know, I just felt really uncomfortable for a second. What do you mean? <sighs> I, I wasn't listening to anything that Mike was saying. I just, I couldn't pay attention. I, I felt like something was on my neck. I, I just really just wanted to get out. Has this ever happened to you before? No, it's really never happened. <laughs> what do you feel on your neck? It just felt really cold and just really uncomfortable. And why'd you start crying? I just wanted to get out of there. This has never happened. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't find any physical proof that an angry ghost lives in the tomb. It looks like what might be attacking people is their own fears. It even happened to me. But one thing's for sure. This is the creepiest cemetery I've ever seen. Personally, I've always wondered why, if poltergeist exists, they don't just come out and say what they want instead of making rooms cold and shutting off cameras. Get out! Wait, first, get me a turkey club on rock. Easy on the mail. Then, get out! That's more like it. Excuse me. Coming right up. And make it quick. I'm very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Remember, things aren't always what they seem.